Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the iPad accessories that after two years I kind of think I not have to have but they would be the first ones I would buy right now if suddenly all my stuff got stolen. Buckle up. First thing that I would buy because I bought it for like my 9.7 inch iPad and then I bought it for my 12.9 and then I bought version 2 for my 12.9 when it came out is the paper like screen protector. This is not an ad, they don't sponsor me at all. I bought them all. But the paper-like screen protector is number one, really nice when you have a pencil. Number two, it helps keep the smudges away. And number three, recently when my daughter like attacked my iPad with I don't even know what, it scratched the screen protector, not my screen. So that was excellent. Paper-like screen protector, I'd absolutely buy one. I bought one for my wife, bought one, I just keep buying them because they're excellent. And I will have to replace this one because my daughter scratched it. Number two, because I do have a, you know, an SLR, do video stuff, SD card reader is a must have. I'd look for something that's USS 2 now, um, but I found that my just cheap one I got at London Drugs was far better, is far faster than my Stego USB hub, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, that's it, it's excellent to just to get photos off. Next up, uh, iPad ESR magnetic case. I actually don't have one right now because when I built my magnetic iPad Visa stand, I wrecked with it. I used two instead of one. I'd hoped to use one, but I'd made a mistake and had to use two. But before I had a magnetic back case for my iPad Pro, I kept using ones that had a shell where they clip in and out and they were great. Like I'm not saying that they were bad, but man, the magnets are so much nicer. <laughs> That's just it. Magnets are nicer. It's easier to use now that I've got the magnetic visa stand to snap off and on and I've got the magnetic like the folio or the keyboard folio or the magic keyboard for the iPad. Magnets are the way to go. Just get a cheap magnetic case. Spare battery for long days working. I've had uh, this battery from iMuto for a long time. It's 10,000 milliamp hours. It's got two ports. It's great. It's also kind of bulky. And this left me on long days working remotely, taking the battery and something to plug everything into the wall. And I was just a pain in the butt. So what I've got now is the Anchor Power Core Fusion. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it is less power than the iMuto one I have or than lots of other batteries, but it's also a wall plug. So when I need to work for the day, I can go out, I can use it as a battery when I want to, and I have a plug, because I, I usually have a plug at some point in the day, I can just plug it in, and then it'll charge my devices and charge itself, which is excellent. Powerbeats Pro. I have been on the wireless headphone bandwagon for years. I got like Jaybird X1s is what I think they were last advertised as, but the Jaybird Blue Buds headphones, they were like the first really nice wireless waterproof headphones for running and stuff. And they weren't fully wireless. They did have a wire connecting around behind your back, behind the back of your head. My wife still has them. Mine end up dying. I used mine way more than my wife did. Or at least I used to. And like in the snow and in the mountains, um, in like hard, hard conditions. Um, but they were great. And so now I have the Powerbeats Pro. They are also excellent. I've used them again in the snow, running. Um, I've used them in the rain for hours and I use them at my desk too. I use them when I'm out remote, when I'm working around, I, they're just excellent. The, I think it's the H1 chip to be able to switch back and forth between your devices is stellar. Looking forward to the improvements that we keep getting with, uh, new devices and making it easier to switch. Finally, if I was replacing my iPad gear right now, I would get kind of, I guess two options we'll say, depending on what you need. For keyboards. So I'd either get the Smart Folio keyboard or I'd get the Magic keyboard. If you're a heavy typist, you're going to use the trackpad a bunch, you're doing a ton of writing, then I would say the Magic keyboard is the way to go. If, however, you're a light typist, you're not going to be doing a lot of typing with it, spending a lot of time working remote, especially remotely, um, then the keyboard folio is great. Uh, that's it. I think the keyboard folio is better for portability. So if you're, you know, going to be carrying it around a lot, keyboard folio. If you're going to be, say, long typing, the keyboard is just better on the Magic Keyboard. Next, when I'm sitting at my desk, there's a few things that I need to just improve the iPad experience as well. Number one, good USB hub. I've gone with the Stego USB C hub. It works excellently. It's got an Ethernet jack. That's one of the things that I really like about it. And if you really need to be on the go 
it's got not only a long cable, it's got a really short one that hides inside it. So you can take that short cable on the go with you if you need to. I keep mine permanently mounted at my desk. I don't really need ethernet or extra USB-A when I'm out and about, because I've got like USB-A to USB-C stuff all over, but it is still an excellent device that I've been happy with for, I guess, a year and a half now. Now, because I'm using a USB-C hub, I've got to have extra power going to that hub. And what I've chosen is a Nectech USB-C brick that delivers 60 watts of charging. So plenty of power to go to any devices that are in the USB-C hub, plenty of power to charge the iPad well, and it's just rocked along. There's nothing to say about it. It's a brick that sits under my desk, but it just works really well. Next, desk headphones. My choice is the SteelSeries Arctix Pro wireless headphones because I really like wireless headphones. And yeah, they're gaming headphones. They do look a little bit like gaming headphones, but they're also super comfy and they also just work all day. And the microphone is decent. It's not like amazing, but it's decent. And not only that, but they connect via USB-A to my computer on one connection and Bluetooth on my iPad for the other connection. So I can use them at both devices at my desk. I use them regularly, like every day with my iPad because I got kids and construction behind me and they just block out the sound. Now, the iPad at your desk is not especially ergonomic. It's, not, it's as bad as a laptop, if you have one of the cases that I talked about earlier. So you're gonna need one of two things. First thing I did was get an iPad stand and it's a good stand. I like it. It's still sitting in a drawer. I don't use it all the time now. I don't use it a lot now. If I'm going to do long work sessions, let me say upstairs in the other chunks of my house for some reason for the day, because say my wife has to work and I've got to watch kids and work, then I will take up my stand. But what I really like is the visa arm that I have. So my second option was to get that visa arm and to get an Ergotron locking clamp because that's really all I could find at the time that really clamped a 12 inch tablet or a 13 inch tablet. But recently, and I'll link this up above, I built myself a magnetic iPad holder, visa mount, by cutting a piece of wood and then gluing a magnetic case to it. And that's just, it's really nice. That's it. That's what I do right now. I just go over the wooden route right away because it's cheaper. Since your iPad is on your desk and it's elevated now, you're gonna need two things. First off, you're gonna need an external keyboard of some fashion. I prefer my Ann Pro 2. It's nice, it's just really nice. It's mechanical, it's got arrow keys if you tap, it's fully programmable with Mac OS, it switches between my devices really nicely. It's just excellent, there's nothing else to say. It's a really nice keyboard. The other thing you're gonna need is a trackpad or mouse. I think a trackpad is the way to go with an iPad though. So I've got the Magic Trackpad 2. I had a Magic Trackpad 1. It didn't have some of the gestures. The 2 is there. I actually like the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard, the case for it, more than the trackpad that the Magic Trackpad 2. I think mostly because the one physically clicks on the iPad case and this one just has a haptic click. So it doesn't actually click at all. It just kind of fakes click. Finally, it's not something you have to have, but with Apple Arcade, with the games that are out, the iPad is a really nice gaming setup. Just for, I don't know, more casual gaming even. I find it excellent when my kids are watching TV, if my wife's doing something, all right? She has courses all this week, so I've been, they're watching some TV at night and I'm playing some video games on my iPad because it's just easy to do. Grab the controller and play. That's it. For my accessories, I think that are kind of crucial, the ones that I think are important for the iPad, those are the ones that I would definitely be looking at right away. I'd get the Magic Keyboard case and I would start on a stand because that's just the cheapest way to enter, but I would be working up really quickly to getting all the Visa mount and some of the other things that I have. Now, if you want to support the channel, there's a couple things you can do. First off, I have got a new Skillshare class out on TickTick, which is my task manager of choice. You can find a link to that below. If you liked it, you can give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, you can subscribe, then you hit the bell. YouTube lets you know what's happening. And then if you really love just the channel in general and the Skillshare courses and for you, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale where you can support the channel. Just help keep videos coming out. Have an excellent day.